and that they are having more of their minerals, I'm assuming because of the deficiency and not eating stuff outside. Look at this. She falls asleep. She wants to fall asleep on me. I can't tell you how many times she has fallen asleep. So today I am going to show you a few of the things that we are doing to get things going. When we first bought this property, we had the idea of building or either buying a modular home or getting started. We picked the house, we found a place that they would have contractors and you know things were in motion to start happening in the spring of 2020 but then we all know what happened and it kind of messed up our timeline it messed up our job opportunity here and we had to scratch everything and start over so it has it's it's been a process of readjusting figuring out money and jobs and a lot of things that we had calculated in the beginning and now they're not there anymore so when i moved here initially i moved by myself my husband joined me the next January, so I moved here May 2020. And in January of 2021, my husband finally moved here. So basically, the job situation started in the state of Oregon January of this year. And it still is a little bit challenging. Um, as you probably know, things are going up. Uh, construction things especially are very expensive there so it's kind of a process that we ended up moving at the worst time possible as far as our planning as far as job and as far as building however today I want to show you part of the process that we're going through right now because we have 2.3 acres, we had a plan, we had an idea of what we were going to do, where we were going to put the house, and you know, we did the driveway, and we got things done for a septic, and just so you know, I got a person to do our will, which is a big company in our county, and it's been since July 2020 and he's still not available to come. I called around, there's a waiting list of 12 months. So even if you had the money available to do it today, you still have to wait for the people, the right people to come and get things done. If we would have gone with the house that we were purchasing it from Clayton Homes, they would have figured it out, you know, the well, the septic, the whole developing of the property, and it all would have been together with the payment of the house. However, however, since we're doing things on our own and kind of getting ready for buying the house, um, you know, trying to get power, trying to get water, trying to get septic, you know, all those things, when you try to do them by yourself, at least where we are, in the country, in the county that we live, it's very, very tricky because things don't move as fast as you want, and even if you have the money to get it done. Now, recently, uh, we started the process with the power. Initially, um, it was going to be $5,000. Now we are over $10,000. And on top of that, all the, the, um, the pipe that needs to go under ground so they can bring in the power from the road, that was another chunk of money, almost $4,000. Okay, if you keep the math, you, then you know. 
this whole process if we would have done it in another time before the virus happened then we would have paid seven thousand dollars for the power but right now because things are how they are and things are so expensive construction stuff is so expensive the power company needs to up the rates uh, per, per feet cable is more expensive the the, the what is it called the pipe that needs to bring the cable in it's more expensive and you can't find it in a lot of places especially the the large amount that we needed to bring power from our road so it's it's been a joke but that is just one of the things that I wanted to share in the vlogs because a lot of times you see people moving to the country doing the change from city to the country life and you know they talk about being debt free they talk about you know having your ducks in a row and all that stuff but to be honest a lot of people are asking me about this change and how I feel about it I'm talking about friends I'm talking about family and I think the 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 move itself it's been the best thing that we've done for our family but it's just the wrong timing right now if you're going through that process properties are um, let's say our property let's say it was $30,000 well right now it'd be a hundred and twenty so what four times more of what we purchase it for and that's just an example um, I'm, not, I'm not saying those are the numbers but four or five times more expensive and I'm talking about raw land there are houses selling in the country where we are right now for over half a million dollars so I guess what I'm trying to do in today's vlog is share with you numbers um, a lot of times when you are watching this kind of channels like a farm channel or a homestead channel it's all about you know we save money by raising our own meat or mm, we don't save money but we eat organic and we eat healthy by but the you know it might be that it's a completely different situation of what it was but even today in 2021 that's still happening and I guess what I'm trying to do is be honest and open about the realities because you still have to go to work if you are not completely uh, independent you know if, if, if you don't have if you if you don't have any debt and if you're able to provide the basics you know you either have some kind of income passive income but if you have to go to work if you have to things are more expensive and uh, honestly much harder to get going now than what it was two years ago so I guess the the virus did change everything for us and I am not complaining I am just sharing this information in the hopes that somebody else if they are thinking about moving or if they're trying to make a switch in their lives they can take it a little bit more seriously now in the state of the world and the state of the county that you're gonna move the state that you're gonna move and understand the money implications of starting over somewhere else and be smart about the kind of debt that you're carrying with you to your new life because you can live in the country or you can live in the city but if you have the same amount of bills you will have the same stress in the country as you probably do have in the city so I guess it's sharing with you the process at least for me it's more about being transparent and relatable because sometimes I struggle relating to some of this new um, not new but to these channels that I know that they mean well and that they did they you know they could have done things differently from us but the reality is 
buying a property today in 2021 and moving to the country is a completely different story of what it was if you purchased that property in 2019 and moved into it. Things change and, you know, it could be a good thing and it could be like an awesome uh, year next year and, you know, economy blooming. I don't know what's going to come in the future. But I want you to be aware that things today are different and that you should be thinking more about all the behind the scenes like permits and buildings and basic things as utilities. If you're moving to the country, where are you going to get your water? How expensive is going to be to get to water? Thankfully, we are close to water everywhere here, so it's not going to be a too deep of a well, but I can't get somebody to come and dig a well to save our lives. So keep all those things in mind and line things up the way that you think it's going to help your particular situation, which could be completely different from ours. And I'm sure it probably is. But if this does anything, is I hope that provokes some thoughts. And at the same time, it kind of engages you to go uh, with us through this building process, through this starting from nothing process, and showing you how it is to not only bring power and water and a septic and a house to the country and pretty far away from a small town and that way I can kind of vlog my experience, have this as a reminder and hopefully you can join me and learn something from our process. Now what I've been doing today is coming up with a sample plot plan. And this is basically an idea of how they want a map and an idea of what you want to build or what you're going to do with your property. Where are your property lines? Where is going to be the building that you are going to put? Where is going to be the driveway, a proposed structure? Um, and, you know, how far away from septic, if there's one available, if you're going to have a drain field, and all the things that they expect you to have in your plot plan. Now there's a lot that you should keep in mind when you're doing this, like how you're going to do the existing extra structures, if you don't have any. How are you going to put the proposed structures? How are you going to, you know, add the information? Like, you know, all the things that need to go into a plot plan. It needs to be all down to scale too. So I did one inch is 40 feet. So by that measurement, you just have to come up with your plot plan. Now I'm gonna cover my neighbor's property, but you know, basically this is my idea where we're gonna put a shop, where we're gonna put the house, how far away from the creek. Where we have, you know, the driveway, where is it coming from? Because we do have a very long driveway and all the things that needs to go into a plot plan. Now, right here is a neighboring, property that has all the information about that property so I don't want to share that with you <coughs> but just so you have an idea it's not only your property but you also have to keep in mind a lot about your neighbors if they have a septic if they have a well of course you're not going to want your water being contaminated by your neighbors um, septic so there are some rules to that and that's why they want to know where exactly do you want to place your house where exactly do you want to place your shop is it close to a water source is you know are you going to be contaminating that water source are you going to you know all those things if there are slopes if there's any kind of um features from your property needs to be in this one plot plan so it, it did take me quite a while to come up with this, which sounds very silly, but once you, if I shown you the whole 
paper, it'd be a completely <laughs> different story. I mean, there's a lot more over here that I really had to think about and come up with a way to fit everything in a way that it will work for us because that's where the house is going to be forever that's where the shop is going to be forever that's where we are going to try to park our cars you know try to make a garage over there and all the things that really you know are forever structures having said that the planning it's over and the filling up paperwork is over so i just have to go with all this to the county turn on um, not only the paperwork but make my payment of course and then they're gonna review it and there's a lot more that you have to fill up like driveway stuff um, there's an inspection that needs to happen and there's a lot really that needs to happen so it could take more than a month to process all this paperwork and be able to have all the permits that we need to get started it's not going to be all the permits that we need to build or to bring a manufacturer home or whatever we're gonna do but this is just so we can start and then the rest of the permits and the rest of the things are going to come as we are going through stuff like as we are building our uh, septic and our water and all the things that then are gonna have to be really well thought out because now we said this is where the house is gonna go so I can't put a well over there where I can't put my septic over there unless I want to re redo the whole thing although one thing that you should know is this is not set in stone, so you can totally change your mind. You're just going to have to pay for it to be readjusted. And that's what they told me last time I was there. It probably changed by then. But uh, I guess we'll see in about a month how all this went. If we ended up getting what we needed out of all this paperwork. And if we have to fix something that they feel it's not right. <laughs> she has a shock color, but she doesn't really need to be shocked. It has a beeping sound, and when she doesn't listen, I beep it. And then she looks at me and she knows that she needs to listen. And I think we had to use it once. <laughs> She's a super good girl, but she doesn't listen when she is in her mode of, you know, I'm doing whatever I want. Look at the face. Look at the face. Look at the face, you big girl. And so I keep it on <laughs> during the day and I take it off at night. But she listens. <laughs> she doesn't listen when you say no more kisses, but she listens otherwise. You go, girl. I love you, Hope. I love you. <laughs> and we're gonna go with Hope to town. Yay! Right, Mama? Right? Are you excited? Are you excited? Like, she's excited.